my transfer was on Thursday, June 1st. And I told myself that I would could take a test if I wanted to on Thursday, the, what would have been the 8th, I think. And, and so Thursday came and went and I didn't test. And then I remember thinking, okay, well, if I want to test while Andrew's at work, I should probably test on Friday and I should probably do it in the morning. Um, we had family in town and there was just kind of a lot happening that weekend. So I was like, I don't really want to be testing over the weekend. I want to, I want to know, um, whether or not this is likely going to work or not. Um, and where it had been over a week, I felt pretty positive that, um, if I got a positive test, that was a good sign. And, and I wanted to see the line progression, but at the same time, I was like really nervous to take the test. Um, but Friday morning came and I woke up at like five and I had to go to the bathroom so bad. And I was like, well, I'm not ready to test. Um, but anyway, so I ended up testing on Friday and it was positive. <laughs> because I've had years to imagine what that experience would be like. I watched so many YouTube videos. I've listened to so many podcasts, read so many blogs about women sharing their experiences of finding out they're pregnant after infertility and IVF. And, and so I had years to like imagine what that would be like and what I would feel. And um, when I took the test, I knew pretty quickly that it was positive because I took two tests. Um, I had a pack of those like at home things that you can buy on Amazon, but they were three years expired. And so I was like, eh, I don't know. I ordered some more tests on Amazon, but they didn't get here in time. In fact, they didn't get here until literally like two days ago. I'm like, not helpful now, but you can't return them, which is stupid. So I've been taking tests for fun. Um, so, cause I took two tests and I had, a like knockoff Kroger brand, um, quick result one. And then I had those expired ones. So I took the test and I, I did the, um, I think I did the expired one first and just like set it on the wrapper. And then I did the like nicer pregnancy test. Um, and I put it back in its wrapper. And then I just kind of was like, I don't know if I want to stay in here or go and come back because my sister had said to watch how fast the line shows up because she says if the line shows up really quickly, that um, is a good indicator that your HCG levels are higher. Um, but if you wait for the full three minutes and you get a faint line, that is a pretty that's an indication that your HCG levels might be a little lower. Obviously that's not like exact science, but it made sense to me. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, no, I feel like I should be here and see if a line shows up and how quickly. And so within probably like 30 seconds, I looked, I just kind of glanced down and I saw the expired test and there was a faint positive line. And I thought in that moment, I'd be like, you know, break, break down crying. And then I was excited. Like, I always get excited, but in my head, I'm like, but this is an expired test. So can you get a positive with an expired test? Or is it more likely that you get a negative with an expired test when you're actually positive, when you're actually pregnant? So I was like, I was like, well, there's two lines here and I've waited for this moment forever. Never in our entire marriage of, you know, we've been married almost seven years. Have I ever seen a positive pregnancy test? And like, here's the moment that I see two lines and it's with an expired test. And I was like, wait a second. Like, I don't know if I can trust this. So I, so then I was like, okay. So then I pulled out the other one and there was um, a second line there as well. And that's when I was like, oh, okay. Like this actually worked. Um, and it was, so it, sh the line showed up probably within like a minute, maybe a minute and a half, um, which I kind of felt like that was a pretty good sign. And so I tested over the next course of the several days. So I tested on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday when we did our beta test. And so we went in on Monday, they did my blood draw and I got a call later in the afternoon um, from our IVF coordinator. And <laughs> it was kind of interesting because, so she called and left a message, but I missed the call. And so then I called her back and she didn't answer. 
So then we kind of played phone tag for a little bit and I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I need to know. So it wasn't until like about four o'clock in the evening when I got in touch with her and she just was like, okay, you want to know your results? I was like, yeah, I think so. And she's like, okay, so typically we want your HCG levels to be between 80 and 100. And then she's like, so are you ready to hear where your, your numbers are? And I figured I'd probably for sure be over 100 just because I was like, where, how quickly it's coming up. The line is obviously progressing throughout the last several days. It was getting darker each time I would take it. So I was like, I'm definitely probably like 100. So I was thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm like maybe like one to 150 is what I was thinking. Um, and she kind of laughed and she was like, 674. And I was like, holy cow I was like what the and my first thought was like is that bad like and she's like that's not a bad thing like don't worry she's like that's great she's like so you are definitely pregnant <laughs> and I was like holy crap that's crazy um and so she was like just to let you know like that often means that they're twins <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh okay <laughs> Um, she said my progesterone level was at a 24. They like it to be at least a 20. So she said, that's looking good. Um, but she said, yeah, your HCG level is really high. Um, most likely that means that there's two. Now keep in mind, we transferred one embryo. There is a 3% chance that the embryo will split when doing IVF, 3%. And so, yeah, my levels were 674. Um, six times the amount, almost seven times the amount that they want it to be. So, um, so she's like, we'll schedule you another ultrasound and, um, in a week, which I was expecting to come back in like two days. Cause everything that I've read and seen people do their first beta test and then they come back 48 hours later and they do their second beta test. Um, but she had me come back in a, a week and I don't know if that's just how my clinic does it or if it was just cause my numbers were so high. I'm not sure. I should have asked. But essentially, we, she's like, we're going to have you come back um, next Monday and do a second beta test. So today we went in for our second beta test and had my blood draw. And now I'm waiting for the results. So it's about 2 in the afternoon on Monday, June 19th. I think yesterday was Father's Day. So yeah, um, today is Monday. And I'm waiting for my call to see what my beta levels are. Um, I'm really curious and anxious to see if they are still really high for where they should be. Cause like I said, I'm just barely over five weeks right now. So um, if they're still really high or if they've kind of balanced out, very anxious and curious to see. So uh, I'll give an update when I get the call. I'm good, how are you? Okay. Eighteen thousand. Okay. Okay. Um, so we want to schedule you for an LB ultrasound, which lands on the thirtieth, so next Friday. Next Friday. Okay. That should. Okay. Is there an? Does that day work? Yeah, that should work fine. Okay. Perfect. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. You're welcome. Okay, where was appropriately 10,000, no, 18,000. So last Monday it was 674. Today it was 18,200, okay. Just got my second shipment of my progesterone and oil and my suppositories and I'm pretty excited that I still get to keep doing these because that means that the transfer worked and I'm pregnant. So I will continue to do these until 10 weeks. So we'll have one more shipment of these. And while I don't love being stuck in the booty, I do love knowing that it is allowing me to keep this pregnancy. So. Bring on another 60 days of booty shots. What are we doing today? We're going to do an ultrasound. It's not a big deal. Grace is freaking out for no reason. I'm Come nervous. On. We're going to find out if there's a heartbeat fine. and if there's more than one. It's going to be fine. Let's go. He's jumping in. All right, here we go. 
It's June 30th. Oh, just day. No big deal, Grace. It's gonna be just fine. I'm nervous. Hoping to hear. At least one heartbeat. <laughs> you got heartbeats already? And this is what we call a crown right thing. Okay. I remember when I first heard your heartbeat It had only been eight weeks Standing there, staring there at that screen Was the first time you ever scared me God knows, I don't know Exactly what I'm doing But good news, we got her to get through it Only one baby Which is good, but maybe a little sad What'd she say, it was a centimeter? It was 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters, I think. 11 millimeters. Yeah. What was the heart rate, 141? So there's an old wives tale that says if the heart rate is over 140, it's a boy. If it's under 140, it's a girl. I think it might be the other way around, but it's just an old wives tale, but they say if the heart rate is above 140, it's male. I feel relieved. <laughs> Told you, it's fine. <laughs> Can you dance a little bit? Can you shake a little bit? There you go. Take them off. This is part of our fertility experience. Ready? And the spotlight. Today is an exciting day. It's my last shot. We've made it to 10 weeks. I'm 10 weeks today. So I'm doing my last progesterone and oil shot. And yeah, I'm excited. And we're to leave for work today. So early. So I'm doing it on my own. Yeah, we're all done. All done. That's a wrap. I have two estrogen pills I have to take tonight. And then we're done. On to regular pregnancy. Be a 